Hi, it's Greg Hurrell here with another Vim screencast. And the topic of this one is going to be a little trick for moving lines up and down within a file. Um, this is one that I've seen demoed in various contexts and I've kind of stubbornly resisted using it uh, because it just seemed too cute. Um, and and the, the basic trick is that you would make a visual selection um, and then use the J and K keys to move the lines up and down of that selection. Um, it's not quite as impressive when you're looking at a file like this with no nesting as it is when you look at something like this, for example, um, see these two lines here. Um, if I move those down, you'll see that they respect the indentation and then they start indenting again as I move them. I can put them back where they were before. Now, the reason why I resisted doing uh, using this is because in addition to being cute, I think it possibly um, encourages some bad habits. Uh, so if you take a look at this uh, and I wanted to move this near the top of the file, I would, I'd be mashing the key and like everything about Vim uh, trains us to not mash keys, right? Um, nevertheless, uh, seeing that the implementation was so small, I figured, ah, this probably won't hurt to have it in my VMRC. Uh, and uh, if I find myself abusing it, I'll, I'll remove it. So let me explain how this works. Um, and then I'll talk you through some enhancements that I made to make it a little more robust. Uh, the basic idea here is that in visual mode, that's what the X stands for there, surprisingly, um, we're going to bind K to M, which should actually be moved just to make it more explicit. Uh, uh, what this does, as the help indicates, is it moves the selected range from its current location to an address. Um, an address is something that you can look up in the help as well. There's a bunch of addresses that you can use to specify here. But what we're basically going to do is uh, go to this mark here, which is the beginning of the visual selection and I'm going to go two lines above it. The reason we're going to go two lines above it is because what the move command does is it inserts something below the specified line. So imagine I have a visual selection that consists of four lines and the first one is like line four. If I say that I want to move it to below line three, I'm not actually moving it anywhere. I have to move it to below line two and four minus two is two. So that's what the minus two is about. Um, so basically we move the visual selection to up a line um, and then we use GV to select the previous selection again because as soon as you run this normal mode command you will have left visual mode. So we reselect the visual selection and then we hit equals which will reformat it. That's what the, the indentation change is performed by. That will also lose the visual selection so then we select the visual selection again. Now, as these map, um, mappings are implemented, there's a couple of problems with them. One is that, in fact, yeah, I, I could demo how broken they are, but I'm just going to describe it. Um, one is that if you continue mashing the J or K key until you get to the end, it will eventually fail to move because this address will become invalid. At that point, you're going to, the thing's going to abort and you're going to lose your visual selection. Um, and, and that is particularly annoying, especially in the case of... Uh, J because J shift J will join lines together. So if you go too far, you'll start joining lines together. Um, and shift K is even worse, I think, because it uh, ends up like looking up help or something. I think I've got K bound to not because it annoys me so much. There you go. Down here on uh, 17 lines below there. Um, I've never wanted K to do anything and it always just annoys me. But uh, those are the problems with the, the kind of naive mappings as they're implemented. So there's probably a plugin that does this, but I couldn't be bothered searching for it. So I just made a couple of uh, auto-loaded functions here that handle the edge cases that I just spoke about. Um, so basically, we're just going to silently call these auto-loaded functions, move up and move down. I've got them open in another tab that I can show you. Um, let's just look at, say, move up. Um, the fact that I've got this range keyword on the end of the function is quite handy because it means that when Vim calls this function, it's going to set these uh, A first line and A last line variables. Um, that way we can determine where the, the visual selection begins and ends without doing any kind of weird hackery. If you wanted to see a prior version of this, you could look at my Git repo uh, where I was trying to do this without first line and last line. And I could do it in NeoVim, but I couldn't reliably do it in Vim, uh, whereas this approach works in both. So basically, we can use those special variables that Vim supplies us with to determine whether or not we're already at the top. So if the first line of the selection is at the top, uh, we're not actually going to do anything. 
Uh, likewise, we've got this like if visual check, uh, which is going to confirm that we're in uh, visual mode. In theory, we should always be in visual mode because I'm like calling this from a visual mode mapping, but uh, this I guess here is just probably an excess of precaution in case somebody were to call these autoloaded functions directly from somewhere other than visual mode. But basically, if we're not at the top and we're in visual mode, then we can try to move up. Um, so we do that with this command, which basically says um, over the range of the previously the previous visual selection, move it to the location that is two lines before the beginning of the previous visual selection. So that's a bit of a mouthful, but that's what it does. Um, and likewise, down here, um, when we're moving down, we do a similar check. Um, if we're not at the bottom, in other words, if the last line of the visual selection is not the last line of the buffer, and we're in visual mode, then we can do the move. So we're going to, over the range that is the previous visual selection, move it to one line below the end of the previous visual selection. I um, mean, both of these have this, these feed keys calls that you can see here. Um, these do what the GV commands did in the previous uh, simple version of the mapping. They basically reestablish the selection, align it, and unconditionally reestablish it. Because one thing that's going to happen, even if this conditional doesn't fire, uh, we still will have lost the selection at this point. So that's why there's this uh, unconditional call to feed keys GV. Um, and so that is how it works. And, and you can see here that it works. Um, I, but I, as I said at the beginning of this screencast, I would advise against using this unthinkingly because you, you could develop some really bad habits when really what you want to be able to do is uh, use jumps, I think, in a lot of cases so that you're not mashing keys. So just say that I wanted to move this block, uh, this this function to uh, into the body of the other function. I could go down five, uh, yank it, then jump down nine and then paste it. It maybe requires a little more thinking, but it's probably better um, ergonomically um, in terms of things like RSI. Um, and in general, I just think it's true to the spirit of Vim to not really do anything that requires you to mash keys repeatedly. But it looks good if you're ever doing a screencast, I guess, to say, look at the magic things I can do with my moving lines. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this, uh, subscribe because I've got some more content that I want to record for you soon um, and hope to see you again.